Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne. I'm the Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program with County Board Chairman Bill Gehring. And today our guest is Finance Director Tim Finch. As you most likely are aware, Sheboygan County is in the midst of our 2004 budget process, as well as all local units of government in the county and throughout the state. And today, Tim's going to tell us a little bit about the roles and responsibilities of the Finance Department, as well as how our budget process is going to date. So, Tim, good to have you with us today. Thanks, Adam. Good to be here. Tim, um, why don't you start a little bit about when you started working in the Finance Department and some of the roles and responsibilities of the Finance Department. Sure. Be glad to. I came to Sheboygan in uh, 1999, moved here with my wife, Linda, and my daughter, Ashley, and then started in the Finance Department in uh, May of 2000. So I've been there a little over three years, and um, the uh, uh, responsibilities of that department are quite extensive, um, varied activities, which I really enjoy. So it was, it was a, a pleasure for me to be able to have the opportunity to, to take that position. Now in the department, you have approximately how many staff, and what are the general roles and responsibilities? So we have 15 staff on our table of organization. Actually, right now we have three vacancies. So we, we really just have 12 people on staff right now. But we're responsible for the overall financial dealings of the county, um, handle parts of uh, the payroll system. Although we're kind of changing how we do that, we're, that role is going to go to the, the IS department. So we're streamlining things a little bit there. But uh, responsible for accounts payable, uh, auditing, working with the external auditor, um, any financial reporting. My, one of my biggest responsibilities is dealing with uh, making sure that, that you, the chairman, and that the finance committee have information that they need to make decisions. So anything to do with finances, pretty much we do in our department. And you're doing a good job. Oh, thank you. As many people, I'm sure, are aware, the, the budget every year is one of the most important policy documents that are developed. We're in the midst of preparing that. Could you give our viewers somewhat of a high-end overview of what that process involves? Sure. It's extensive. As you know, we start probably February or March of each year thinking about what we're going to do for the upcoming year, trying to anticipate what's going to happen at the state level, what's going to happen at the federal level, internally, what kind of changes do we see in our own operations. So it's almost a year-round process. We have a little bit of a break, but we really start thinking about it February, March. And then we move into uh, June is when it starts uh, in earnest because we have our budget kickoff meeting. All the department heads come to that. The chairman usually will come to the, the budget kickoff. A uh, number of supervisors will usually come. And we'll go through what the parameters are for that year's budget. If there have been any targets established, those will be given out to department heads. Instructions on how to prepare their budget. Um, it's really a, a very comprehensive meeting to give them an idea of what they might be up against during their budget and to help them do the mechanics of it as well. And then after the budget instructions are, are provided, and as you said, that's in early June, we have a specific goal, we have specific targets, you have a compre comprehensive set of budget instructions, where do they go from there? Right. The next thing that they do is there's training available to them to use our computer system for budgeting because we do it all within our J.D. Edwards system. So there's training set up, and we have our own training room, which is very nice in Sheboygan County. It's a huge asset to have a room where we have computers set up. People can come and train. It's a big screen, and they can, they can see what they're supposed to be doing. So we use that to give training to anyone who is new to Sheboygan County or anybody who feels like they need a refresher on how to do the the budgeting. So that would be the next next step. Uh, from that point on, once they have a budget developed, and this would be a department head's responsibility to do that for their department, then they would meet they meet with you and with myself to kind of go over their budget. And uh, we, as you know, we help them look for ways that maybe they need to, um, things that maybe they've done not quite correctly, problem areas that might come up when they meet with their committee or with the finance committee. So we kind of help them get ready for, for the process and suggest cost-cutting measures if we think there's something that they could do to, to cut costs or increase revenue. We'll suggest that too. So um, that's the next step. Once then they get past you and I, which is the first kind of the first line of defense, uh, then they have to go to their committee and they'll discuss the, the budget, what they're proposing with their committee, and their committee really is the one who will bring it forward to the finance committee because it, it's each liaison committee's job really to, to approve that budget and to be comfortable with what's in there. So then from that point, it goes to the finance committee, 
they'll look at every single budget in the county and they'll ask uh, supervisors to come in. Normally the chairman will be there for a lot of those meetings. And, uh, then they'll go through that budget one more time and ask questions, challenge the departments to defend what they have in their budget. Uh, from that point on, then we actually go to the county board and there's a series of meetings where the county board will look at the budget in, in total and make any refinements and then finally adopt it in November 4th. So it's a very long, long process. In fact, we rarely get a break from budget. It seems like we start gearing up already in February, March. The kickoff, as you said, in June, and then all the departments and liaison committees are working at it until, Absolutely. as you said, the county board ultimately approves it in early November. Thanks, Tim. And so Adam already discussed, uh, we come up with targets, and he, along with the executive committee and the finance committee, began to develop the target system of budgeting in 1999. Can you give us a little more insight into how an individual committee would develop their budget for the, their liaison department? Sure, sure. The, um, the, the budget kickoff meeting in June will give them all the information they need to go back and start working on their budget. It'll give them the targets. If a target's been established by the county board chairman, the finance committee, the administrative coordinator, they're going to have that information. So they'll know at their fingertips what they have to shoot for as far as a, a target. And it will probably be a levy for that department. And they'll know, here's your target levy. Um, you need to stay within those parameters. So they'll go back and they might adjust revenue or expense, but they need to come back with that target. So the department head really has the first responsibility to do that. And then when, when they feel like they've done what they can do, then they go to their liaison committee. And then from that point, uh, it's, it's that committee's responsibility to challenge the department head um, or, you know, approve the budget, whatever they feel they need to do. They really, department head prepares it, but the committees are the ones, it, it's really their budget. Okay, thank you. The target system was really established to do away with the peaks and valleys, the up and down movement of the rate. Is there a limit to how much the county can tax? Yes, there is. In 1992, the state imposed limits uh, for the counties, and they actually what they did was they set the rate in effect at that point and they said you cannot exceed this this rate. Um, you can increase your levy dollars if your equalized value goes up then your dollars you can levy will go up but your rate rate cannot go up. There are some circumstances where you can increase it but um, for the most part you're pretty much locked into to what that rate is. So um, Sheboygan County and all the other counties are, are set at what that rate was back in 1992. Okay. How has the county performed in the last couple of years? What has their rate been? Sure, yeah, I've got a chart that I could kind of demonstrate that. For the last few years, if you look at the chart here, we've got a, a chart with uh, 1994 to 2004. And over the last few years would be, uh, we can take 2000 to 2004. See the rate's been pretty steady. Back in, in uh, uh, 1999, 2000, we were at $6.30 per thousand of uh, equalized value. And then we had a little bit of a bump here in 2001, but then since then, we've held the rate steady or been able to drop a little bit. We actually went down two cents in 2002, went down another two cents in 2003. And 2004, the last column, that's projected. We, we don't have a final rate established yet, but um, we're looking at 646 as a preliminary rate uh, that could change somewhat. I wouldn't expect to see that go down at all. Uh, my sense from uh, discussing with finance and, and uh, with Adam and the chairman that I, I think probably, um, if anything, that will go, go down somewhat. We're going to uh, do our, our best to do that. But you can see the last few years we've done a pretty good job of keeping the rate steady. I think our viewers are probably very happy that the rate has stayed fairly steady, not these peaks and valleys. Uh, what are the main revenues to the county and the main expenditures? Sure. Can you touch upon those? Oh, absolutely. I've got a chart here for that, too. Oh, and um, just quickly, we do have uh, one more here regarding our, our proposed rate for 2004. We've just kind of broken down uh, of the 646 rate, which, again, is preliminary. That could change before the budget is, is adopted. But just the, the main areas that we're looking at, where we spend uh, our tax dollars, uh, number one would be the Sheriff's Department. That's the, the piece of the pie that's in blue. And you can see of 646, 
that's $1.83. So that's the number one um, uh, use of, um, of our, our tax, tax levy here in Sheboygan County. And then number two would be the pink, uh, purple piece of the pie here, Health and Human Services. Those are all our, our community programs. Uh, debt service is the, the yellow portion. And as you can see, that's also substantial, 86 cents. Healthcare centers, Rocky Knoll, Sunny Ridge is uh, the next uh, <clears throat> slice of the pie there at uh, 81 cents. Then every, uh, all the other miscellaneous general fund departments, 73 cents, and the highway at 55. So these kind of, in, in a big picture, a nutshell of where we spend our money, that kind of gives you an idea of, of where your, your tax dollars do go. And then for revenues, this is for 2003. This is the actual adopted budget. We haven't finalized our 2004 yet, so we're going to show you some 2003 actual numbers. Uh, we've got about $135 million of revenue. And again, we've got a piece of uh, a pie here broken up into slices. Um, a number of large categories, the blue slice here, intergovernmental revenue, and what that is, that is uh, state grants primarily and transportation aids. And those departments that would be affected would be Health and Human Services, uh, the Highway Department, and there are some other departments that also receive state, state grants, a number of them. So those are pretty much state dollars, and as you can see, they're, they're substantial. Uh, however, they are declining, and probably in future years will, will decline even, even more. Uh, small interest and in other revenue is just kind of a small piece of the pie. We do get interest on our investments. Um, so uh, that's a small, small chunk. Property taxes, this is the taxpayer's portion in gray. And as you can see, it's quite large, 29% of the total. So that's the, the taxpayer portion. Uh, smaller piece here on use of fund balance. That's the little green wedge there where we have used uh, fund balance, also called the rainy day fund. Um, something that the, um, it's good that we, we have that. We're in a much better position than some other counties who don't don't have much, and also the state has uh, has little to to none of that as well. So we're fortunate here; we do have that, but we do use it use it too. So uh, we'll continue to to do that. Public charges for services in blue. A uh, number of departments charge for things that they do for the public. Uh, the number one item in there would be the healthcare centers charge room and board charges for uh, the nursing home residents. Uh, fines and fees, a small part. Bonding proceeds, again, for our capital projects, small portion. And then uh, interdepartmental revenue would be for activities done internally between departments within the county. And then on the expense side. Again, we've got a pie. And just um, starting down here, I'll start with the blue one. General administration would be for our general departments in, in the county, um, and we have a number of those that provide services, would be the blue. Health and Human Services is in the white. You can see that's 27% of our total expenditures for 2003. So that's uh, very large. That would be our largest source of uh, expenditure would be the Health and Human Service Department. Healthcare centers, also quite large in the pink there, 23%. Uh, the, the interesting distinction here is that health care centers is quite, are almost as big as health and human services in expenditures. However, the levy that the taxpayer has to provide is a lot less because they're able to charge for more of their services. Uh, public works, which would be highway, airport, etc., is in blue, uh, 9%. And then everything else is kind of broken out. Justice and law would be 12%. So it just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of where, where you do spend your money. In fact, as people are looking at this, and it, that's a lot of information and a lot of figures, but I, the key thing to remember, $136, $138 million budget, really the largest departments, in fact, the two largest departments that make up half of our budget are Health and Human Services and the health care centers. Uh, the highway department then falls in there as one of the larger ones, but after that, as you pointed out earlier, 23 departments, they all fall into a smaller piece of the pie there. There's, a, there's three or four that are really the key departments that are uh, creating the most expenditure and cost and, and relying on the levy. Absolutely. As the chairman of the board, I certainly don't want to increase the levy if I don't have to, and I think most supervisors would agree with me, but there are certain pressures on the county 
budget. Could you talk about some of those pressures that seem to keep pushing at raising the rate and the levy? Uh, you're correct. We have some, some very big pressures these days. Uh, intergovernmental transfer is one of them. It's a, a funding mechanism for the health care centers. Actually, they're federal dollars that channel through the state to the health care centers, but only to county-run nursing homes. And they're designed to offset the losses from the Medicaid rates, not actually meeting the, the cost to provide care to the patient. Typically, county nursing homes have a higher percentage of Medicaid uh, residents, so they end up with, with larger losses due to, due to the, the Medicaid program. So IGT is intended to kind of offset that. And it has helped in, it's helped Sheboygan County tremendously over the last few years. Unfortunately, it's going away. It's being reduced significantly. In 2003, we budgeted $5.4 million for IGT. Now our optimistic budget to date for 2004 has been $2.7 million, which is what um, all the information we had led us to believe that's what we'd get. It's possible we could even get less than that. So IGT is, is, uh, is one issue that uh, is we have to deal with, and it's a big one. Wage and benefits. Wages, wage is probably the number one issue that every employer has to deal with because it increases geometrically as it compounds. It's just like a savings account that you, you're getting interest on interest. Well, wages are exactly the same. Every time you have a 2% or 3% increase in wages, that compounds the next year when you have a 2 or 3% increase. So long term, wages are the number one issue that, that we have to face. And that's very difficult because you have union contracts that require you have certain increases. You want to pay your people appropriately. Um, but it's something we, we need to, to deal with. Um, so wages, um, benefits, um, we talked about IGT and benefits. The number one problem we have right now is health insurance, and we're not alone in that. A number of, uh, of other counties and cities have had a problem with that as well as private business. And we have experienced larger than normal utilization of our health care plan, and we're self-funded, so we cover the entire cost of it. So we've, um, we've had to deal with that, and we're still, as you know, we're still dealing with, with that, and it's, it's getting worse and not getting better. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, are there other impacts of the state budget problems that face us, such as shared revenue? Shared revenue is uh, another big issue. That was reduced for 2004. We're looking at a reduction of between five and $600,000, which is a lot. Um, it's something we've been able to manage through our budget process with setting targets for departments. And we knew it was coming, so we, we built that into our, our budget plan. But it's still very difficult to deal with, and if it becomes worse, then we, you know, we could be in a, a worse situation. So um, that's, uh, that's also an issue that we have to... And finally, the issue of funded and unfunded mandates that we've heard a lot about but haven't seen a lot of action on. Yeah, unfortunately, no. The, the state's in a bind. They have a budget they have to balance, and uh, one example would be uh, correctional out-of-county placements of juveniles in correctional institutions run by the state. Their fees have increased two years in a row, I believe now about 12% per year. So they, um, and we have no control over those, those fees. We have to pay those. And we have to place juveniles when we're ordered to do that. So um, that's, that's an underfunded mandate that probably will get worse. Thank you. Well, if, you, if you've stayed with us this long, I give you a lot of credit because again, a lot of information, a lot of numbers, finances can sometimes uh, tire one out in a hurry, but Tim Finch and his department have done a tremendous job, and as he pointed out earlier, really the last four or five years, the county board and our management team as a whole deserve a lot of credit because we have flattened that rate out. We intend to continue to do so under the leadership of Chairman Gehring and the Finance Committee and others. And this year we are positioned for success in spite of a $2.7 million reduction for our health care centers, in spite of a $600,000 reduction in shared revenue, in spite of the fact that our wages and benefits are going up almost $2 million. In fact, uh, Tim mentioned health insurance. We saw a 29% increase for 2003, and we're looking at somewhere around a 12-15% increase for 2004. These are huge challenges that the board is grappling with, that our management team is grappling with, and because of, again, good teamwork and a successful budget process, uh, we're positioned for success. 
Let's turn away a little bit from all the numbers and focus a little bit on some of the very good things that have also been going on in spite of the challenges that we face financially. Uh, Tim, why don't you talk a little bit about some of the, the ongoing and future capital improvements that we're making in Sheboygan County? Sure, sure. That would be kind of fun to do and get off the, the budget woes that we have in Sheboygan County. Uh, we have a number of projects for 2004 and uh, through 2008 and we have a five-year plan so for uh, 2004 we're looking at continued improvements at the airport with the extension of runway 321 and uh, also expansion of some of the general taxiways there um, some planning department changes uh, the greenbush trail extension uh, science edition right here at uw sheboygan is in this year for the last half it began in 2003 and it'll be finished up in 2004 uh, so that's, uh, that's going to be a very a nice project to finish up. Also upgrading some roads and parking lots here at UW Sheboygan. Uh, computers seem to be a constant battle to keep those upgraded and running. So every year pretty much we see uh, uh, additional hardware in there for replacement of servers and, and that kind of equipment. Uh, the Sheriff's Department is going to build a new storage shed for cars and for uh, evidence, and I believe it also includes DNA evidence. So that'll be something, uh, something new that they have to start doing. And uh, so that's in for three hundred thousand dollars. State Highway Twenty Three and County C improvement there, and uh, again another uh, software project for about one hundred fifty thousand. So got a number of things in two thousand four, and very exciting for um, two thousand seven and two thousand eight would be right here at UW Sheboygan. The Information Technology Resources uh, Building Project. So if people wanted to see something brick and mortar, they can go out to our airport, they can mm -hmm. go to Rocky Knoll, they can take a look at the improvements that are presently being made at Sunny Ridge. They can come right out here to UW Sheboygan and Absolutely. look at the library edition. And as you just mentioned, there's a technology center planned as well, though that's in a future five-year plan, which a future board will deliberate and decide sure. upon. But we do have long-term planning here, and good things are happening. Yes, they are. Um, with all this discussion of the budget process and the committee meetings and uh, county board meetings, the five-year planning. How do people get involved? How do they have their voices heard if they're interested in, in weighing in on what our present tax rate is or how a service might be adjusted or if they have a good idea for us? Sure, there's a number of opportunities for them to do that. Probably the best way is to go to some of the liaison committee meetings where they discuss budgets at, at the early level. That's where the, the rubber really meets the road and they um, they get into nitty gritty of what's in that budget. Uh, they can also go to finance committee meetings where the finance committee is going over uh, the budgets. They go over every single budget in the county, every department. Um, so if you want to get a real flavor for what goes on and how the budget is determined, uh, that's a real good place to do it. They can also attend the county board meetings in October. Uh, there will be meetings, uh, the budget will be present, presented to the county board on October 21st, deliberated on the 28th, and then adopted on November 4th. So October 21st at 6 o'clock in the county board chambers, uh, which is in the, uh, the courthouse, and October 28th would be very important meetings for, for the, especially on the 28th. That's the opportunity they would have to hear each budget kind of reviewed on a line-by-line -line basis uh, as the supervisors ask questions. And so I would encourage them to do that. But even prior to that, come to a finance committee meeting because there's a lot that goes on before it gets to the final stage that give you a real flavor of, um, you know, of how the, how the budget's developed. Good advice. We also have 10 standing committees in the county, and whether you're interested in natural resource protection, uh, land conservation, agriculture, again, finance, uh, there are uh, law, the airport, the highway department. Really, if you want to get a good flavor what, for what's specifically going on with those particular areas of interest, uh, look up our agenda on the website or give Julie Glancy, our county clerk, a call or any of the three of us and we'd be happy to share that information. But that's where you can really have some direct input as part of those public, open public meetings, those committee meetings. We've talked about it before. You mentioned it earlier with our health care centers. It's our one of our, either our number one or number two largest department in expenditures. They don't utilize as much levy as the sheriff's department or highway department because they can charge for a lot of their services. Right. But as many of our viewers may know, uh, the levy is going to nearly double 
for our health care centers for 2004. We're very concerned about the reduction in state and federal dollars to, to, to maintain operations. And the, land, the uh, health care centers committee, the executive committee, has, have recently supported and are forwarding to the board the creation of a citizen's task force, again, to get public input. What can you tell us about that, Tim? Sure. The, um, as you mentioned, the, the health care centers are a uh, large talent. Uh, probably our two biggest assets in Sheboygan County are Rocky Hill and Sunny Ridge and provide service to our part of our population that you know is maybe more vulnerable than other parts of our population so they're very important assets to us they're also very expensive it's an expensive operation to run and because of IGT it's going to become more costly and the taxpayers going to be going to have to pay more to maintain the health care centers uh, the citizens task force was generated to give the public a vehicle for giving their input into what should be the future of the health care centers. How can we fund the, um, the care that's getting more expensive and we're getting fewer dollars from the state and federal government? You know, what's the best way to do that? What's the level that we want to provide in Sheboygan County? Do, you know, do we want to provide the number of beds that we have now? Do we want to provide a different number of beds? Do we want to do some al alternate kind of care? So many things you can consider in health care. It's, it's just a, a huge field. But this is to give the public input, because it's important that they have a chance to say what, what's done with these assets, which be, belong to everybody in Sheboygan County. So it's a chance for them to, to have their say and be part of the process. So hopefully folks will be hearing more about this proposed Citizens Task Force. It goes to the full county board this month. Again, it's uh, been forwarded by the Health Care Centers Committee and Executive Committee. And we look forward to uh, hopefully that being supported and getting input from you on where we're headed and how we can continue to improve our operations and pay for them. With that, Tim, we want to thank you for being our guest today. My pleasure. A lot of information, and if you have any questions about anything you saw today or heard, please don't hesitate to pick up the phone and contact Tim Finch or a member of his staff or myself or Chairman Gehring. We'd be happy to try to help you with your questions or get you in the right hands. Next month, our guest will be Rebecca Persick. She is the new Family Court Commissioner, commissioner and we look forward to having her with us to talk about her new roles and responsibilities as the Family Court Commissioner. So until then, Thank you for joining us. what I think or what I believe, you can't be heard. The whole system, it's rigged from top to bottom. An honest voice in politics? There's no chance of that. At least that's what I used to think about politics. I can make a difference. The system works best when we're all involved. The Youth Leadership Initiative prepares young men and women for their roles as American citizens. Pairing technology with education, the Youth Leadership Initiative captures the attention of our nation's youngest citizens and leads them into the democratic process. Together with local schools, YLI offers internet-based projects that complement classroom instruction and foster long-term participation. I'm a member of my community. I'm a parent and a grandmother. How can we help? Bring the free civic education resources of the Youth Leadership Initiative to your schools today. Call now for a free information packet and to receive this Presidents of Our Country ruler. Together, we can pass the torch to the next generation. This is not a race. On the road to financial independence, the winners are the ones who stay the course. Learn more about securing your financial future and choose to save. It will pay off in the long run.